Hi everyone, it's Amali, and I've just created this quick turn it in batch upload submission video for everybody uh, at the request of some of the academics in the school. Uh, the reason that we still need to batch upload all written assessment tasks into turn it in is because the student that plagiarizes is likely to know how to fudge a turn it in report so that it looks okay to us when we check them, uh, but that might not necessarily be the case. Um, uh, so one of the things to remember in doing this is that student accounts and instructor accounts are different. So despite the fact that the student has submitted it through their assignment through Turnitin, um, it flags it in a different way to us. So uh, we can still run it through and it won't flag it as 100% if it's not a plagiarized assignment. Um, it will, or it should actually come up with the exact same originality report as the one that the student has submitted. So the first thing that you need to do of course is go into EASTS uh, and batch download the assignments that you're after. Um, I'm not actually going to do that for an active class for 2017 because then we would have some issues for the reports that are being submitted. So what happens of course is that your batch download goes into a downloads folder and I'm just going to use an example one that I have created for the purpose of this video. So the next thing you do is you then go into turn it in and you add a class. So everyone should be fairly familiar with this process. It's exactly the same way you add a class um, when you set up one for students to use. The difference is, is that students submit the assignments to that particular class and in this case the academic is submitting the assignments. Uh, so you fill out all of the information in exactly the same way except this time around it's only for your personal use. So what happens then is that once you're finished adding the class it will come up here on your dashboard and as you can see I've just um, named mine turn it in example. You click into it and you come over to the right where it says more actions and you hit submit. So up the top where it says single file upload we now want to change that to zip file upload. And the great thing about batch uploading to turn it in is that you can actually submit a maximum of a thousand papers. None of our classes currently exceed that, so there should be no issues. Uh, the other thing is that you don't have to create different classes for different cohorts. All um, 600, say you're in 221 or 222, all 600 students can actually be uploaded into the same um, class, what will happen of course is that you'll have what five different uh, zip files to upload which corresponds with the five different cohorts that you have. So you then of course choose file, so you go to downloads, my example students, open uh, and then hit upload. Depending on the size of the file it might take you know a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes for it to actually upload. It'll then tell you how many files you've um, submitted. So I've got 12 here. Um, no rejected files. Rejected files might be ones that are corrupted um, or files that turn it in actually cannot process and it will tell you that. So you'll need to look at your files, your individual files, if that's the case. Um, so I'm happy with that. I can hit submit. Uh, and I tend to not enter in uh, author names. I don't think anybody else will bother with this either. And that's because, of course, we have um, the student identification here instead, uh, which comes along with the file name. So just confirming here that these are all the files that I want to have submitted. I'm happy with that. Again, this part of the process can take a little while. And then it takes you to your dash back to your dashboard. As you can see all of the files have been um, submitted and they're currently being processed. The similarity will take a little while um, however because it's an instructor error account I have been able to in the past submit and have reports back for about 500 students within about 45 minutes. It's not like student accounts where we have to wait a while. Um, I then, of course, when these start to come back, I sort them by highest similarity and work my way backwards. How you do that is up to you. If you happen to come across a student um, originality report that differs from the one that they have submitted to the university, you just need to remember that 
both originality reports then need to go um, to the head of school for potential investigation if there has been a bit of an issue picked up. Um, but it's that simple, uh, like I said, not very hard process. If anybody has any questions um, or if I have sort of glossed over something that you need a little bit more information on, please send me an email. Uh, otherwise, that's it. Thank you.